morning, we are on Yud Amud Beis, 10, 110B, right? Kuf Yud Amud Beis, I'm sorry. 110B. We're in the middle of this discussion of the Gemara on uh, the, the nature of interacting with the occult, if you want to call it that. Specifically, we invoked two, two things. One is Zogais, the issue of pears, consuming food and drink in pears, and that being an invitation to negative spiritual force. And we had the question of Kshofim, of witchcraft, female witches, or just witches, I suppose. And uh, the Gemara provided a kind of a remedy for each of these, actually. In that, with regard to the witches, the Gemara gave us an incantation to recite if we were to meet one. Something about uh, hot feces in a broken basket in the mouth of the witch, <laughs> the witch, along with talking about all of her spices and oils or hair, whatever she's using in her witchcraft, should be scattered. And with regard to Zugois, with regard to the pears, and as I noted yesterday from Rabbi Feinstein, more broadly with respect to all these negative spiritual forces, you have the principle of all those who care about it, it cares about you. And if you don't care about it, it doesn't care about you. So the less attention you give it, the better off you are, essentially. Although the Gemara said, nonetheless, there should be some minor concern for its existence, not to dismiss its existence entirely. Right? Otherwise, this whole discussion would be mute. The, the whole discussion began because drinking of the four cups of wine is in pairs. The Gemara had to give explanations as to why it's okay that on this later night we have it in pairs. And the Gemara could have just said, well, we did this because we don't want you to care about it and don't care about it. It's all good. But the Gemara didn't do that. This is how Rajbam explains it. And therefore, the Gemara concludes some level of concern should be there. And the Gemara continues uh, with more on the subject of Zugais of pairs. <coughs> and, okay, and actually gives us a, a story, an incident, which combines both of these issues, the pairs issue and the witch issue. Quite a fascinating story. A wild story, if we can use that term. And uh, haven't yet come up with any sort of, okay? Yeah, sorry. Haven't yet, sorry? I haven't yet come up with some sort of meaning to what the story means, but the floor is going to be open. So we'll translate the story as best as we can. Okay. So it's about, uh, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines on top of the page, the third word. He also Abdimi, when Abdimi arrived, so we are here, here in Babylonia, and Rav Dimi arrived from Eretz Yisrael. Now, interestingly enough, Rav Dimi is the sage from Babylonia, from the Hardo, who told us yesterday he was concerned, right? We had yesterday, the Gemara said that in Israel they weren't concerned. And Rav Dimi from the Hardo, Rav Dimi was from Babylonia, from the city of Nahardo, was so concerned, even with the markings on his uh, barrels, he was concerned. And one time he overlooked it and the marking was impaired and the barrel exploded. This is Avdimi. Avdimi himself came from Israel, actually, and moved to Babylonia. Now, when he came, Omar, he said, Shtei <coughs> baits him, two eggs, Shtei a goizen, two uh, nuts, and Shtei kishuin, Kishuin, I think, is cucumbers, right? Let me have a look quickly. I'm sorry. So, egg, nuts, and vegetables. One second. Cucumber specifically. I want to see and uh, make sure I got the translation correct. And look at these kishuin. Cucumbers, yeah. So, Shteya goes in. Where did I just go? I just lost my... Here we are. Yeah. So, uh, two eggs, two nuts, two cucumbers, a davar acher, and a fourth item. Halacha l'mosh Sinai. We have it by tradition going back to Moshe at Sinai that these are an issue of pears, eggs, nuts, and cucumbers. There's one other item that we're concerned about. 
and the sages are concerned, what is that fourth item? That's a concern. What's the, what's the direct translation of Dabar Acher? Another item. Another item. Dabar means thing, Acher means other. An other thing. Yeah, thank you. It, oftentimes it's referred to, I think maybe that's what you're asking, oftentimes it's referred to as a swine or a pig, it's referred to as Dabar Acher. You don't want to call it directly, so you call it that other thing. Oh, okay. But Dabar Acher means other thing. So, and the sages were, cons were, were uh, not unsure as to what that other item is. And therefore, because they weren't sure what that other item is, therefore they said, uh, be concerned about everything. Yeah. Didn't we learn something about earlier tomorrow that the Zubais only applies to the earthly world? It was food and drink. It was food and drink? With food and drink. Okay, sorry. So the Gemara is telling us how we got to there. So because we know for sure eggs, we know for sure nuts, we know for sure cucumbers and there's some there's another item that's on the list of things that one should be concerned of when we stop the bottom the sages are not sure mind you what is that other item and therefore and therefore the sages forbade all other pairs because they're not sure if that other thing is the fourth item okay and this is a very strange statement and i'm not sure what to make of it um because as both Rashi and Ashbam tell us, that the fourth item is definitely a food item or a fruit item, just like the first four. Eggs, nuts, cucumbers are all food items. So the fourth is also a food item, which is strange because earlier we had Rav Dimi himself, who was concerned even with the markings. Markings is the food item. And we had the story where one time he forgot and he put markings in pears and the barrel exploded. So then it's not just consumption, it's anything related to food. Right? Including the barrel of wine. So it's not just eating something in pairs, it's doing anything related to food in pairs. Right? It's it's I'm saying it's it's broadens the story of Rabdimi with the with the with the barrel broadens the definition more than just what we're what Rabdimi is telling us here, which is four food items. Three that we know, eggs, nuts, and cucumbers. And the fourth one, we're not sure what it is. And yet, Rav Dimi himself was so concerned, even with respect to markings, Designate. even designations and markings, <laughs> to the point that it actually had a negative effect. So I'm not really sure how it works. This would be very interesting in terms of uh, hiding, right? You're making marks in 10. Animal you had to, oh, but 10 was okay. 10 was okay. But, but anyway, you didn't... And you're not, when you're counting the 10th animal, you're not marking every one. You're just counting, you're only marking the 10th. Unless, here's what I'm thinking. Because this, again, going on this principle, whatever, whenever you care about it, it cares about you. So because the sages are not sure what's the other fourth item, and therefore they banned all items, therefore that concern for all other items actually invited the problem with all other items. That's the yeah, only way I can think yeah, about I'm it. Also, say that statement, you don't care about it, it doesn't care about you. And why is the sage of making this ruling? Right, well, because we did say the Gemara. Oh, one thing, then, then everything. So that's why I mentioned before, the Gemara says, you have to be concerned somewhat, even if you're not caring about it, right? That seems like. We, yeah. we said that the Gemara said this yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not quite clear to me, but I'm just putting it out there. Unless the point is, that there are four food items, but other activities also are included. I'm not sure exactly. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. And anyway, this is what the Gemara says. That there was this fourth item, we're not sure what it is, and therefore uh, they concern themselves with everything. It seems like it opens the window on the food item. Even though Rashi and Ishbam both agree that the fourth item is another food item, we're just not sure what that food item is. And yet Avdimi was concerned with markings. And he actually got affected negatively by not by marking once with pears, right? So I'm not really sure. Where's wine fitting? Maybe wine's Where's the fourth. Is maybe wine's the fourth item, right? So again, this maybe grape is the fourth item. No, but we just had this whole discussion about cases of, of wine, counting the beans, wine. Okay, one second. Where's... The counting the counting of beans was to keep track of how much wine he drank. Right. Right. So then with beans. 
So again, because that could be the fourth item. It could be grape is the fourth item, in which case you can't consume grape in four in pairs. Yeah, but that it's so well documented. Except for the fourth item. That's my so again, because there's a fourth item, we're not sure what it is. So the sage is banned on all items, including wine. It's already been discussed in Gemara that we that wine was an issue, right? Because it might be the fourth. That's the Gemara's tell. That's that's the Gemara's discussing that right now. You're asking the order of the Gemara. So you're saying what we learned earlier may have been uh, for sure, post for this, sure, this piece? for sure. Okay, for sure. The Gemara's not written chronologically, you certainly. Like but more than that, and it's possible. That it's also possible. So much conversation or discussion or argument around wine. It, it's also possible that the sages in Babylonia were always concerned with zugas, pears, because they knew pears was an issue. And now Dimi arrived, he gave us clarification and said, You should know there are three definite, the fourth we're not sure, and that's why you're concerned about the other ones. It's also possible. Oh, okay. That's also possible. But nonetheless, I, again, I'm still not. Clear on this precise because specifically Rashi and Ajban both agree that the fourth item must have been another food item. We're not sure what that fourth food item is. And yet when Dimi's behavior himself indicated not just consumption of a food, but actually activity, markings on a on a barrel, which is not consumption, which seems not to fit with this statement. So I'm not sure exactly how to reconcile that, but I'm just opening the floor to that question. Yeah. More questions will come than answers today. Yeah. Okay, continuing. The Gemara says, well, how do Asara, Tamya, Shisa, Arba, that which the Gemara said earlier, that 10, 8, 6, or 4, depending on the opinions, Einbem Mishum Zuge doesn't have a concern for pairs. Right? We had the Gemara earlier, which gave us limitations on how far you can go. One opinion was once you hit 10, or once you hit 9, no more concern for pairs. Another opinion said once you hit 7, no more concern for pairs. Another opinion said once you hit Five, no more concern for pairs. Three. And another item, another opinion saying once you hit three, no more concern for pairs. Meaning the only issue of pairs are the two or four or six or eight. Says no, the Gemara. No, just two. Well, depending on which opinion. Oh, the opinion okay. which says it stops at 10, okay. eight would be an issue. The opinion that says it stops at seven, six would be an issue. Right? So that statement says the Gemara. Light Omran is only is not said Ella only, the Indian Mazikin, with respect to negative spiritual forces. <laughs> Which the Gemara called Mazikin damagers, inflictors of damage. <laughs> right? That's when we're not concerned. The numbers stop when you talk about negative spiritual energy. Avalain Kshafim, but where there is witchcraft involved, female witchcraft specifically, Afilo Tuva, even more than six, eight, ten, Nami as well, Hashina, we are concerned. So if you have a combination of drinking in pairs plus a witch trying to put a spell on you using your consumption of pairs as part of the spell, then even if it's beyond 10, there's still a reason to be concerned. Now the Gamorzin tells us a wild story. And uh, <laughs> about a jealous, about a jealous man who ended up becoming an alcoholic. <laughs> That's the best way I can put the story. Let's hear the story. What do you say? Maybe that's why the sages said you can't ignore Zugax entirely. Because maybe you have because a... Maybe tied with this issue with the, with the, the witches. Yeah, so let's see. So the story is like this. Kihadahu Gavra. There was this fellow, the Gersha de Visayu, who divorced his wife. Azul Insiva Lachanua. She went and married a shoekeeper. Now, for some reason, this guy in a shoekeeper was selling wine too. I'm not sure why he's selling wine in a shoe in a shoe shop, but he is. As we'll see. Call Yom every day, have a Azel, the ex-husband would go, Vishasi Khamra and drink wine. Um in the new husband's shoekeeper. So he's a jealous husband who's every day showing up. Right? He's the you did this story? He's an ex-husband, and every day he's jealous, uh, clearly, of his wife having remarried some other shoekeeper. So every day we so every day he would go to the shop 
and drink wine. And have a of the lake shofim. So the ex-wife would try to do witchcraft, rich witchcraft, witchcraft on him every day when he would come to drink. Maybe that's why I divorced her because she was a witch, but he still loves her. And they're first coming back and she's busy doing witchcraft on him. Strange story. The yeah. Lekha Mahanyala Bay, but she couldn't get a hold on him. She couldn't put a spell on him. We shouldn't have him as Benafshe, the Zuga, because he was very careful to make sure never to drink in pairs. He always drank an odd number. Yoim Chada, one day, Ishti Tuva, this fellow drank way too much. And he had no idea how much he drank. Because Ad Shetesar, Avet Sayal, up to 16 glasses of wine, he was still lucid. This is pretty good. <laughs> He's got high tolerance. He's Darbanafshe, and he'd be very careful. So up to 16 drinks, he can keep track how many drinks he had and make sure he was to get an odd number. Yeah. It's an alcoholic, a jealous, a jealous alcoholic. Yeah. Mikan Vailach. Mikan no, no rage issues, not so far as we know. But Mikan Vailach. Mikan Vailach, from here going onward, after 16 drinks, Loy have it sile. He was already not lucid anymore. But Loy is Darbin Afshe, and he couldn't, he couldn't. And he couldn't to keep track of how many drinks he had after 16. And one day he hit over 16 and therefore completely lost his lucidity, blackout. And therefore, if Kisib is okay, he ended up leaving the room, leaving the, the bar slash shoot shop after having concluded at an even number, which is obviously way over 16, way over 10, right? Kiava Ozo. When he was traveling, when he left, when he after he left the room, Gaspe Ahu Taya, there was an Arab merchant, more refers to Arab merchants as Tayas. Essentially, it's a local merchant because we're in Arab lands, but it's an Arab uh, merchant who notices him or bumps into him and can tell that he's under a spell. This merchant. Omar Lay, the merchant tells this jealous, jealous ex jealous ex husband slash alcoholic. Gavra Katilahu to Azul Hacha. A dead man is walking here. So Azul, the, the, the fellow, the drunkard, just got weak. He's, he's already wobbling, I suppose, because he's already blacked out, doesn't know how many drinks he had already. He's beyond 16. So he's wobbling and he's Chapkila Dikla. And he grabbed onto a palm tree for support. Savach Dikla, the palm tree withered and dried out. Upokahu, and he exploded. Curtain and scene and story. We learned earlier. So, around palm trees. so there is some sort of association with palm trees. There's an association with Taya, this Arab merchant. That's a thing that's been come up a few times in the question of the occult. Uh, it's a, I'm sure there's a lot of like on a psychological level, one can analyze a story about like a guy who's divorced his wife, still loves her, knows she's a witch. And knowing she's a witch, he's careful to, he knows she's a witch. He knows how to avoid her her, her spells by making sure he's not drinking pears. So he hangs around teetering on the line of dangerous, right? Because he wants, I, I don't know what he wants. There's, there's, there's some sort of deep psychological issue this guy got going on in terms of a jealousy. He's, he divorced her, right? So in halacha. The fact that she married enough, he's precluded from remarrying her. He can't remarry her. But he's hanging around at the new husband's shop, who, by the way, isn't throwing him out. I'm guessing because he's a good customer. Why throw him out? The guy's drinking wine every night. Give him. This guy's a good customer, I suppose. Right? And uh, the, the psychology of the story, I'm sure, is 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 endless. Um, you know, he's teetering on the dangerous in, her, in his interaction with her via the new husband. And alcohol at the same time. All kinds of issues. Certainly. Accusations of so Yeah. There's also uh, the significance of the number 16. That's that's his limit, specifically 16. There's the fact that he's a shoe keeper. Why is that important? And somehow he's selling wine in his shoe shop for some reason. Uh, there's all kinds of details there that I'm sure point to something deeper that's going on. But again, I don't. I, the floor is open to hear what might be the deeper meaning of this 
of this story is, but it's a wild story nonetheless. A few more lines, the Gemara continues. And again, the next few lines are going to leave me with more questions, as I'll explain. Omar of Avira, Rav Avira comments, Tyrus plates, that is to say, if you had two dishes of something, so you had two plates, bowls of rice, the kikarais, and two loaves of bread, with no concern with pears. Yeah. No, even the same one. Even the same, well, if it's different items, it's for sure not, because it's not in pairs. But even the same, same item twice. No, again, so. No, no, again, if you eat two plates of a dish, same dish, same same dish, same serving, so say, so two different plates, that's right. It doesn't matter. That's for sure it's not an issue of pairs. But even if it is this, again, even if it even if it is the same food item, if it's two plates, no concern. Okay, so two plates of two bowls, two bowls of rice, two servings of whatever. No pears. Same thing with two loaves of bread. And Gamar explains. Klolo de Milsa, here's the rule. Kol adam, anything, any food item whose conclusion in its presentation to you is done manipulated by man. So the person has to cook the rice, to cook the dish. I got to bake the bread. So because I have to cook the dish, therefore it loses its aim by Mishim Zugois, it no longer has the spell of pears because it's been manipulated by man. But if it's been given to you as heaven made it, this is to say it's in, an, in its natural state, the way God made it, anything that might be consumed, so two apples, Served to you exactly the way God made it, two oranges and so on, as opposed to two bowls of rice, which were cooked by man, cooked and flavored by man, two plates of meat, cooked and flavored by man, or two loaves of bread, cooked and baked by man. Right? But if it's uh, finished by heaven, if it's finished by heaven, if it's if, it's a, if the product you're receiving is exactly the way it was made by heaven, that is to say it's in its natural state, Haishinon, then we are concerned with pears. Where's where's the where's my question right now? We just learned the whole story about wine. Wine. Wine is made. Wine is man-made. We're busy concerned with wine. And yet here we have the statement that it's not concerning if, if it's made yeah, by man. Especially that it's placed right before the story of the wine. Just after the story of this guy drinking wine. I don't know. Unless the only thing I can think of is that wine has no other ingredient other than the natural ingredient. But it's still not. It still doesn't. It still doesn't sit well with me, because I guess unless like old wine, where all you did was squeeze it and let it ferment, right? As opposed to bread, where you baked it and you manipulated it. Actually, theoretically, maybe that's maybe that's why. Using from grapes and from So then that would be the only wine to be concerned about. Yeah. And we're not assuming everybody at their pay stuff later is drinking that kind of wine, right? We're assuming everybody's buying wine that's been made, but unless. You could have this I know, but that's, but that's obviously not what we're talking about. It's obviously talking about regular wine, especially if you have team, he's talking about barrels of wine, yeah, right? Marking barrels. Unless the point is there's no other ingredients in there, there's no cooking either. You squeeze it and let it sit. So if you squeeze it and let it sit, you haven't changed its natural state. That's the only way I can understand it. Whereas cooking a dish, you add in an element that's not there in nature. And the same thing with baking the bread. By breaking it, you add in an element that's not in nature. So maybe cooking is the issue. And that's like an added element that was not there in nature. Whereas just squeezing wine and letting it ferment, all the elements were there in nature. You didn't add any elements, which would then mean our wine today, which has all kinds of things added to it, sugars, and, and especially if it's boiled wine, like it's mavusha, it's cooked, then there wouldn't be the concern for Zugas at all. Because otherwise, we have no way of understanding how this statement here, where the Gemara says that it's concluded by the hands of heaven, is the only time there's a concern for Zugais. But if it's manipulated by man, it's not concerned for pears. I have no other way of explaining how wine is a concern for pears. So much so that we're marking barrels as a concern. Even though we said before, there's only food, four food items and we're not sure what the fourth food item is. So, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, I have more questions than answers here today. Okay. But 
anyway, these are the kinds of questions, just putting it out there. When I, when I ask questions, it should be understood, make this clear. It's not, I'm not asking questions uh, to challenge the Gemara. It's the reverse. You ask questions because it helps you get to the truth of the Gemara. The more questions you ask, the more it'll point to what the Gemara is actually trying to say. Because what you, what you in theory, what should happen is we should get one answer and switch the way we think about the Gemara and all the questions will fall away. That would mean we truly understood the Gemara, right? If you have one, one key that unlocks everything, because then, right, that would be that would mean till now we're reading the Gemara on a surface level, but if we open up a window to a new level of learning the Gemara, and all the questions will fall away. You see that yeah. the Gemara itself does it right. The Gemara will pile on questions and tell us, and therefore, because of all these questions, we must think about it differently. And as a result, all the questions are gone, right? So the way to push yourself to the point where you see that switch is actually by piling on more questions. So think of more questions, pile them on. And see if on Monday morning we can come back with a new way of thinking about this that will hopefully answer. Yeah, so see if we can do that. So what are our questions? Our questions are, uh, why is Abdimi himself concerned with markings when he said that there's only four food items and one of them we don't know? Um, we also want to know the nature of the story. What's the meaning behind the story? Uh, the significance of all the details where he goes to a palm tree, the palm tree dries out, he explodes. It's 16 dreams specifically. Um, his the, the, the new husband is a shoemaker for some reason. He's divorced. Why is he? Well, he, the, you know, the psychologically, you could say he's, he's a jealous husband. He's coming back. But still, nonetheless, you are correct. That should be whatever our solution is. should include the fact, whatever our solution to this whole problem is, should include the fact that it explains his jealousy as well, certainly, as well as his alcoholism, clearly. Um. What's this thing about natural food only? A natural food only, exactly. What where does wine fit in when we're when we are seemingly only concerned with natural foods? That's the language. It's concluded by heaven. Wine is not concluded by heaven. It's concluded by man after manipulating the wine, manipulating the grapes. Right. Well, maybe we have to ask the question: What does it mean concluded by? Heaven? Exactly. Good. What does it mean concluded by heaven? Versus concluded by man. Maybe one falls into a certain narrow category there. That's correct. So we'll have to think about that more. And um, I guess when we go further in the Gemara, we'll try to look for more questions and see if any of those questions trigger a thought that will change the way we think about all this and hopefully answer all of our questions. Wonderful day. Good day. And good and Ed of Shabbos will pick up, God willing, on Monday.